Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you yet again with another weekly episode. Today is going to be a good one, um, a great one. Uh, I don't have a, I, I don't have a lot of quantity, but what I do have is quality uh, to share with you today. Um, most of this stuff, or at least some of it, I got from my local diecast meet, which was last week. Uh, some of the stuff that I got, uh, we're not going to look at till probably next week, but I pulled up, you know, a good amount of stuff mixed with some stuff I got in the mail, uh, to show you today. So, um, yeah. So first let me just show you what I got in the mail. So we got the RLC club member, yada, yada, uh, 72 Skyline, Sky, Skyline, Skyline HT 2000 GTR club exclusive redline club these are not numbered we're going to open this up i don't have this casting yet because i didn't get the chrome one i still want to get the chrome one i think the one that came out previous to this i think that would be pretty sweet to have over this one uh but i like the the this style skyline i think is one of my favorites so this and the ken mary i think I, i'm just a big fan of they're my favorites the older ones so we'll open this up take a look at it. it comes with the patch the pin and all that jazz so we'll open up that also from mattel creations we got this matchbox uh this is pretty cool ordered this i don't remember how long it's been i already cut it open uh but we got the dragon wheels matchbox beetle i've got the original old version of this as well so we can kind of compare and contrast so premium hot wheels premium matchbox that's going to be fantastic to, to look at all that stuff and then get those open and then i've got some more hot wheels here we got the chase car from the uh first car culture release of this year 2022 first zero of five chase so my set for the american scene is now complete just in time probably for the next series to come out so that's pretty awesome i was uh, stoked to get this i got this actually really really cheap for my good buddy todd crazy todd who we've mentioned several times on the channel and then um i got from my buddies uh sc diecast check them out you guys they're a cool kind of local to me hobby dealer uh they're on ebay as well as oldies junkie 77 they got a storefront in sheboygan falls wisconsin which is a little bit of a drive for me so i don't get to make it there too often but they come to my local meets which is fantastic and um, i get some stuff from them i got some green light from them i'm not going to show that in this episode what i am going to show though is the miho exclusive mini gt stuff i got from them so we got the uh mustang here curious to see how this compares to like the global 64 tarmac works casting maybe we'll do a little comparison on that um got this uh golf 4 gt this is actually a usa exclusive so these only come as a mio exclusive i think the rest of these are available in the international packaging as well and then i got the uh other GT uh, in shadow black, this one here. And of course, we're gonna open up all this stuff, so. And then, really cool, he hooked me up with the um, Isuzu N-Series vehicle transporter, which is a Liberty Walk, and it looks like this is actually a Mini GT Tiny collaboration. I thought that was interesting, so I think this casting originally came out as a Tiny. I've got, I think, one Tiny model in this. So it being a tiny 164 scale, and I think it's their tooling, it's not like a TSM tooling. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily true 164 scale or not. It probably is, but I don't know for sure. And then um, I got from my buddy Jeremy Bolter at the local meet. And this is the last thing I got. And uh, I, the only reason why I got this is because I sold... I sold a Japan Historics one set there, so I got some some scratch from that, and then decided to go ahead and spring for something that he's had for sale for quite a long time. It's been sitting there, and it's been sitting there for a while, not because the price was bad, but because it's kind of a niche thing for people, right? There's not that many people in my area, thankfully, actually, that collect 
Auto World is die hard as I do. Um, a lot of people get it. They're popular in the area. They disappear off the shelves and all that stuff, but not as many people that are willing to really spring for some stuff. Uh, so he had this set for sale, which we got a regular version of the Dodge Challenger. We got the Ultra Red, and then we got the Ultra Raw. That's sweet. Um, I believe he actually found this in store. I'm pretty sure he did. Um, he does a lot of hunting. He used to do a lot of hunting. Um, and he was very lucky when he went out and found stuff. He kind of works traveling around the area, traveling around Wisconsin and stuff. So he gets to hit uh, Walmarts out of the area and stuff like that and has gotten lucky in the past. He's had this for a long time and uh, decided to finally part with it and wanted to part with these as a set would not get rid of them of course i've already got that and i've already got that but that's fine these will go into the the auto world hoard and then this raw this raw is is sweet so this is i believe my 10th raw and i decided what i'm going to do with auto world raws i'm not going to go after every single one because it absolutely would be impossible there's just no no way to do it even if i had well, I guess if I had unlimited money, I'd be able to do it. But if I, even if I had a ton of money and a ton of disposable income and was able to throw a ton of money at this, it still would be difficult to track all these cars down. There's just no way. So what I decided that I'm going to do with the Raws is I want to get one Raw at least for every Auto World tooling. That's what I'm going to do. Um, technically, I have another Raw of this tooling already, but it is a variation of the tooling. It's not the 74 I forget what year Challenger it is, but it's not the 74. So this still fits the bill. So I'm excited for that. And then he also had one of these on his table. And I've been looking to get a second one of these carded for a while. I never picked up a second one of these uh, for the Horde um, when they came out. And it's one of the best releases of the square body pickup uh, that has ever come out, especially as a step side. This one's got wood grain in the back. We're not going to open it up. But anyway, I just wanted to show that I did get this. Um, so that's what we're going to look at. And like I said, we're going kind of quality over quantity here. We've got, you know, premium, premium stuff. And uh, it's going to be a fun episode. So uh, keep her tuned. Let's go ahead and flip the camera around and look at this stuff up close. All right, guys, let's start with the Mini GT stuff, uh, just because we'll do that. Spoiler alert, we're going to wait till the last car we open today is going to be that Auto World Raw. 1 of 10, you know, got to get up the guts just to open it. I've always, Every time I get a Raw, I consider leaving it in the package. I really do. But, you know, I've opened up all the other ones I have. It's just, it's got to get done. But we're going to go ahead and do that last. We're going to start with this Mini GT slash tiny collaboration it appears um izuzu n series vehicle transporter now spoiler alert as well i have also already you know full full disclosure i've already opened this thing up and i've taken a look at it and it is pretty cool but let's go ahead and get it out so it comes in your kind of classic mini gt style packaging uh totally you can put it back in the box um for safekeeping it comes in this nice protective kind of like blister thing inside the box which we get with a lot of mini gt um, similar style and here is the transporter i'm going to go ahead and just put the box back together here because this is going to go somewhat on display next to the car carrier the mercedes car carrier i have or the actros we have the actros car carrier thing so this is pretty neat. All right, so we've got rubberized mirrors in the front here, which is cool. Makes them less likely to break. We have, uh, it is, yeah, an inserted detail for the headlights. Lots of detail up here. I'd like to get one of these maybe in a non-Liberty Walk livery. No offense to Liberty Walk, but it does leave somewhat flat. So this articulates. Uh, the bed is metal. It's got some plastic pieces to it, but it is metal. Uh, this back thing here tilts down with it. This is metal right here. Uh, most of this is metal. 
We've got some plastic stuff in the, the base, but most is metal. The tires are rubber. I'm kind of being careful with it because I don't want to break it. Um, of course, we got a light bar up. There's a lot of detail going on in this thing, man. So it goes like this. I don't have like a Tomica Limited Vintage, one of these like flatbed hauler things to compare it to. It's always been something on the list that I've wanted to get. I just never sprung for one because they can be pretty expensive. But this will do. I don't think these are too expensive. They're not cheap though either. But yeah, if you want to get one of these, uh, SC Diecast has them. Let's scoop one up from them. And there we go. We're going to leave it uh, articulated like this. It's very cool. It rolls. I mean, it's got like mini GT, even though I don't think it's a, it's definitely not a mini GT tooling. It's a tiny tooling and it's got that right there, their logo. So it is not a mini GT tooling, but it very well could be with the quality of it because it's metal. It's got the same kind of design principles. It rolls really well, all that good stuff. So this is plastic back here, by the way, as well. This doesn't want to sit down quite. I don't want to break it, though. It's kind of interesting how they did this back piece. But, yeah, so we'll leave it like that for a second because we're going to definitely want to put a car on it. Um, I think we should do next is we'll take a look at the four GTs real quick. We're going to stick with Mini GT for a moment. Start with this one. This is a USA exclusive. Miho exclusive. Um, oddly, like this one doesn't have a limited number on it, which I thought was kind of weird, but it is a USA exclusive. It does not like the other releases have like a limited edition number on them, but for some reason, like this actual USA exclusive does not, I don't know if that's normal for them or not, but these you can't get like in the rest of the world packaging. It's only a Miho. It's a true Miho exclusive. So, get that out. This you can just toss because they do have a plastic insert inside this box. So this is the standard kind of Mini GT packaging here. Which surprisingly doesn't have Miho's logo on it. And it's also missing the stickers you would see. Normally they would put like their licensing stickers on there in those spots in the box, but they have them here on this part, part of the packaging instead. And then of course inside here is the plastic insert where you can store the car, which actually I might have to do because I don't know if I got room for these. Oh boy, guys, I am just running out of stuff, running out of room in this little room. So but let's take a look at it. It's really sweet, actually. I'm glad I picked this up. I wasn't gonna get this, but then I saw it on their table for sale. They had a bunch of them, and I was like, ugh, all right, I gotta, I gotta scoop it up. Why not? And man, the details, fantastic. Very, very cool. Let's go ahead and see if she fits on the flatbed, and it does. Do that, put her like that. Not really a good match here, but very, very cool nonetheless. Yeah, I uh, this casting's fantastic, by the way. And as is m most of everything from Mini GTs has been absolutely fantastic. But that's cool right there. Uh, this might be a better, better looking car on it. This black one here, uh, Ford GT Mark II zero zero six. It's shadow black. This says limited to thirty three sixty, but. That's just the U.S. release of it. I believe this one is a also available in international. It's an international release. And here it is, right here. Again, all the awesome details. Now you don't really get to see as much of the detail just because it's, uh, um, you know, the color of it. The headlights are crazy detailed in there. And uh, you can tell there's differences. So, like, this, I think, is the Mark I uh, for GTLM. This is the Mark II. So there is some differences here in the tooling itself. The headlights are different. Um, 
You can see like the little like louver kind of thing going on there. The uh, engine cover area is completely different. There's some just some differences, subtle differences, design differences in the car. And I'm not nerdy enough about these four GTs to be able to tell you what exactly is different about the two besides just the aesthetic of it. Uh, but that's it. The, the headlights, though, the headlights are crazy on this thing. Definitely some LEDs in there. And uh, just really, really cool. So these, these castings are both both fantastic. I'm really glad I got them. Um, this one looks probably a little bit better on the back of the, the flatbed there. Just on account of it matches color. Very, very cool. All right, definitely digging that. As always, Mini GT, you know, they're one of my favorites. I just, I love them. I do. I think they're fantastic. Almost every single thing they put out is really good. I wish I could just buy all of it, but, and just, you know, collect a full, complete collection of Mini GT, but it's just not not in the pocketbook i'd have to give up collecting other brands and stuff like that we're just not going to do that so anywho and how oh we got one more to look at how could i forget we got the mustang so we got the mustang shelby gt500 and i am definitely interested in this one for some reason i thought i might have already got this one but i don't think i do I was debating on whether or not I had it, and I checked my, like, I have a spreadsheet of these, and I, and I did not have it. I was surprised I don't. It's in Ford Performance Blue. I don't believe it's a USA exclusive. It's limited to 3,600 pieces for this U.S. release. Um, but it is the uh, Shelby GT500. We are going to compare it to the Mustang Shelby GT350R tooling from Global 64 Tarmac Works. Again, you get the box here. You know the drill by now and here is the Mustang now Auto World's coming out with one of these too I believe I don't know if it's this one or if it's the GT I forget which one it actually is but it's a Mustang it's a fast looking Mustang I'm excited for the Auto World version look how it actually looks really mean but this thing is gorgeous we've got of course the inserted details for the taillights it's heavy it's all metal we got the details for the taillights it just looks fantastic. Um, really neat release for this. Now, this is sick. I really like it. I but I was very impressed with the Global 64, and I've shown this in a in another uh, video. This is the Ford Mustang Shelby GT 350R from Tarmac Works. Now I've already opened this up and taken it out. I just this is a cool packaging idea as well from Global 64. You can. You can take these out and put them back in and, and do all that. And since I'm out of like display case room, this is a, a very welcome feature. But just to kind of compare the toolings. And what, what we're going to see is actually they're more the same than they are different. Um, from a philosophy standpoint, they both roll really well. Um, the color is a little bit more vibrant on this but I think this is maybe a little bit more accurate the wheels are slightly different this is more of a dark black this one's more of a charcoal black and I know these aren't the same exact model so don't fault me for calling out a difference that is just model specific um, so as far as front end details goes we have inserted headlights on both of them the detailed grille um looks all everything looks good there just difference in in hoods there that's model specific there's a different spoiler of course as well uh the mirrors okay they're a rubbery plastic a rubbery plastic so we got similarities there and the back we've got very similar details as well. We got uh, inserted taillights, inserted taillights. Uh, very detailed, very detailed exhaust. Everything looks good there. Uh, spoiler looks good. Spoiler looks great on this one with full carbon fiber. That looks pretty awesome. Um, fairly to scale, it looks like as well. It just looks really nice. 
so both of these are solid models and both of them are metal on metal a um, little bit of extra detail I guess in the base of the mini GT but really as a comparison this one's got slicks on it as well this one's got uh, treaded tires a little different there it's hard to say one's better than the other really they they're both really good I mean obviously I'm more of a fan of mini GT so I'm maybe a little partial to them um, it's hard to say, you know, without knowing the exact differences of the car. Scale-wise, they're, like, right on. Really not much different about them. So, I like both of them. I'm glad to have both of them in the collection, of course. So, very, very cool there. You guys let me know what you think. you like the, uh, you think Tarmac Works did a better job? Or do you think, uh, our Mini GT did a better job? It's hard to say, but uh, they're both really, really nice. And we just truly are in the Golden Age diecast. I've said this several times. There's just so much, so much good stuff. All right. I think the next thing, next logical thing to do is probably going to be Hot Wheels here. Well, obviously, i got to do Hot Wheels, then the Matchbox, and then we're going to get to the Ultra Raw. Is this going to be a short video today? No. Uh, Corvette C8R. R. So it's the first chase car from car culture and it appears all the chase cars at least for this year are going to be a black variant of one of the releases so this was the c8r that was in the release which frankly i think looks better than this car um, of course i didn't grab it so we can't compare but we'll open her up this might look good, good in that isuzu hauler too so you know it's classic it's just a normal Hot Wheels Car Culture Premium, where you have a, a full deco. It looks good in black. I will say that it's pretty cool. I still am slightly annoyed that they're doing chase cars and car culture because now every car culture set's going to be six cars basically that you got to pick up. One's going to be a chase if you want to be a completionist about it. And then of course you're going to have to go to eBay for them if you can't find them. It's just it's. You know, you'll probably have more luck finding them than you will Super Treasure Hunts. I will tell you that. More often, I am first to a case of car culture than I am to a case of Hot Wheels. A little bit less to look through as well. Looks good on the back of this uh, flatbed. That's a nice pairing. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know. I guess the verdict's still out on it. It depends. We'll see how easy it goes. I got this thing for, I'll just say, I got it for 15 bucks. So I think that's a good price on this. Um, definitely not super treasure hunt prices. It'll be interesting to see as the year goes on what the value, is, you know, the secondary market value is on these things, um, how they do uh, there. That's kind of a judge of how popular they are. And it'll just be interesting to see as time goes on what happens. And um, I guess for that, for the experimental kind of side of it or whatever, and just to see what's going on, I guess I am kind of glad that they're doing it because, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And I wonder if they're going to continue it the following year. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. You know, I'm not sure. Probably are. I'm guessing they are. All right. Another Hot Wheels, the Club Car exclusive. Here we go. Finally got one of these uh, 72 Skylines. So we come, we get a patch, we get a button. Neither of these will be staying in my collection. There's always somebody at my uh, local Hot Wheels uh, collector group thing, uh, local diecast collector club thing that will want these extra patches and pins. I just don't do patches and pins really. The only pins I've kept in my collection were the surplus goodies, uh, square body pins just because those are super cool i've kept those anything else i pretty much i get rid of and here's this again uh, you can read read that i guess on the back of the card if you'd like you can get a focus on her there you go and here's the car if I was a card collector, I probably would be upset with this. We've got card issues actually kind of all over it. Little minor stuff, but that's how it came. And so if I was a card collector, it's kind of got a soft corner here. I'd kind of be mad at this, but I'm not a card collector. So 
we don't really care. We don't need to worry about packaging issues. Spectra Flame, my favorite, one of my favorite paint jobs, one of the worst paint jobs to handle because once you get fingerprints on them, it's hard to get that stuff off, get it to look pristine again. So I'm always tempted to wear gloves when I touch these cars, but we're just going to try to be careful um, and not touch it too much. Beautiful Spectra Flame Blue. Beautiful details. We need to get into that uh, hood, though, to take a peek at that. That's always going to be something that's going to be a bit sketchy. Said I don't want to touch it, and I'm here banging it around. It opens to the front, right? Or am I wrong? Oh, it opens to the front, right? I can't get it open. Oh, man, what do we do? What do we do? Got this little pry tool here. There, that actually works really nice. Okay, push it forward. Uh, it does not want to open. I'm just going to open it that far, guys. You get the idea. There's details in there. I know if I push it harder, it will open. I just don't, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Give it up, Shutner. Put a nice big fingerprint on the hood, too, that we'll have to wipe off before it goes on display. But very, very cool. Um, now, I am preferring, basically, I wish they would just release all their RLC cars not on a card. I wish they would do them all in the acrylic cases because it's just much easier to display for me. I don't have to make a spot in a case for them. So, but still, very, very cool. I, I like the casting. I do want to get the all chrome one. I think I'd rather have that one than this one. All right. <clears throat> Next is the Matchbox. Matchbox Premium. And then we got the Raw to look at. So here is the 1972 Volkswagen Beetle Dragster Dragon Wheels. And it is a throwback to this Dragon Wheels. Original super fast casting, made in England, copyright date 1972, Lesney Products. I don't know how many years this was out. This is an original release one. It's in pretty darn good shape. There's some chrome that's not quite all there on some of the engine piece, but all in all, it's fairly mint. Pretty good, pretty good example of it, I would say. I'm never going to go get a better one, so... So we've got that. She's nice. Looks good. And then we got this new, brand new release from Mattel Creations. When I saw that they were putting out this, I absolutely had to have it. This is the only Matchbox Mattel Creations that I've gotten so far. Um, has been this one. They come in a massive acrylic case, which is a little obnoxious. But... Uh, but yeah, it's it's big. Um, we're gonna go. We gotta get the rubber band off. That's number one priority, right? So we gotta definitely unscrew this from the base. We're gonna do the old flat head for a Phillips tr trick to not strip out the screw. Well, the base is kind of cool. It's got some like road style printing on it. One of the screws is longer than the other, so I guess be mindful of that when we're putting it back together. I don't know which came out of where. I'm assuming the longer screw went to the back of it, though. And then it's rubber banded down so it doesn't go flopping up and down when it's in the package. And it's got a very interesting tie job here for the, uh, the rubber band, so we're going to try to carefully remove it. I don't even know where to begin. This is some crazy job here with this. Just be very careful. I think what I'm going to do is cut it. Would that be smarter? Is that smart? Or is that gonna, am I going to regret that? Where is my scissors? Oh, come on. Well, let's just use this. Okay. 
rubber band is cut. Now we can uh, remove band number one and then band number two. Oh man. Again, we're going to be careful. We'll pull that off. There. Got her. There it is. We got Real Rider tires. Hot Wheels style Real Rider tires. Number two in the front. That's cool. Matchbox Dragon wheels. Oh, it does have the plastic thing in here. Swings down and holds it up so you can display it like that if you wish. Uh, this is metal now. So this was, it's plastic here. This is plastic. The engine piece. This one's tooled to be metal. That's a great addition. This, the base is metal on both. You can see some differences here. Copyright date 2020, made in Thailand. Made in England. I don't, I think this is really neat. It's got like a separate piece for the hinge as opposed to this, which was a hinge with like a pin pressed in, as you see there, going through the back. This one's got an actual separate piece. It looks like you could probably just, you could actually remove the body entirely. I'm not going to do it. Uh, but you definitely could do that if you, for some reason, wanted to. They both have yellow windows. This one's got a little bit of extra uh, tampa work. And it looks absolutely fantastic. It's very cool. Of course, this is Dragon wheels. This is Dragon wheels. So, some slight differences there, but definitely a cool pair. I, I was excited for this one, so I think it's fantastic. Very, very cool very very cool indeed stoked on this one i don't know if i'll be getting more of the matchbox stuff uh, mattel creation stuff it just depends on what they release i don't buy everything uh, you guys know that by watching my channel I'm selective when it comes to that stuff even with like the rlc release cars i don't get every one i know sometimes it'd be smart just to try to get them to resell them but sometimes to me the it's just not worth the effort but this car i had to have so I'm stoked on that. All right. Finally, we're going to get into the Ultra Raw. Now, I'm not going to open up. I'll show you how we had these labeled, though, just for fun. So we got the regular, one of the regular releases. This is version A, which I do have loose right here. There you go. There's version A. I only have one of these loose. So I'm going to keep this carded one. Kind of low-key going after a second carded set of Auto World regular releases, store releases. Just as I see them, it's got some weird mark on the roof. But anyway, very, very cool. Um, and then this is the version B right here. This blue color with a white interior. Very cool there. <clears throat> and then we got the ultra, <coughs> excuse me, the ultra red. He says 2% chase. So that's actually not accurate for store releases. It's really 3%, but <clears throat> whatever. That's okay. Not that many of them made. So 2,500 pieces each, that's 5,000. So what is that? What's 1% of 5,000? 50. And then, so about 150 of these are out there. That's a pretty low number. I mean, it's lower than a, a lot of the, you know, M2 Raws. So, and of course I got two. So here's the my loose one. It's got the green interior. Yeah, just making sure this almost looks like it didn't have a green interior. I didn't even notice this had a green interior, but it's got the green interior of the version A car. So he's got that listed as a 2% chase. Sorry, Jeremy. It's 3%, not 2%, but that's okay. Some of the hobby releases are 2%, roughly 2%. So very cool. And then we've got the raw 1 of 10. Very, very rare. 
and that is factual. One of ten, one of ten pieces worldwide. And I'm pretty sure this one is a true one of ten. There's been some weird releases from Auto World where the cars have been um, not necessarily one of ten. They've been ten on each package for version A and version B. There's been a couple. I know of one release for sure that's like that. We're going to take these stickers off now because, well, I guess it doesn't matter. I'm opening the package, right? Leave them right on there. But yeah, this is uh, pretty cool. Funny thing. So this is from uh, 2017 Premium Release 2. This is one of the releases, actually, that I'm missing an ultra red of. Not this car, obviously, because I just showed you two of them. But the Cuda, the Barracuda in this release. I'm missing the ultra red of it. I still need it to complete this series. I've got a raw now from this series, but I don't have the ultra red. <laughs> Goofy stuff. Well... 1 of 10, it's rare, it's uh, difficult to find, it's definitely going to be worth more in the package than out of the package, but we have to do it, and uh, card no more. This is one of the auto worlds you do want to save this because it fits in that box. And here is our ultra raw. I get it. This might not be as exciting to some of you as it is to me. But man, it's really cool. It is curious though. I thought for sure it would have a white base. I didn't really look at that, but it does not have a white base. The Ultra Red does. Same production date code on the bottom though. 825-2017. They kept the base raw, which is actually kind of cool. Some of the times they put some of the Ultra Red traits, they'll do uh, for the raw. So the raw's actually got the green interior as well, because the Ultra Reds in this series went after that version um, A car. So... Look at this sick piece. Let's open the hood. Why not? What's under there? Anything cool? Probably just an engine. There you go. Beautiful. That's so cool. All right, so we got version A. We got version B. We got an ultra raw, or ultra red, and then an ultra raw. super cool so this is going to be like top 10 episode of the year for me unless i get more raws or craziness but we had premium hot wheels premium matchbox some awesome mini gt we got auto world so some some of my favorite brands represented today um just some really sick stuff the stuff collections are made of in my opinion you know got just some really cool pieces today so a lot of value in this episode to me all right so thank you guys again very much for watching another lengthy diecast weekly episode i appreciate every single one of you that tunes in um just thank you very very much uh you know without you guys i wouldn't be able to get hardly any of this stuff i just wouldn't uh it's just the way it is uh you know so I do thank you. All right. Anyway, you guys have a great day. And uh, yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you next week. Bye.